legalized in England, it'd be, it'd be more chilled out over there than like it is here. Amsterdam's not what it's all about, innit? Do you know what I mean? It's got everything, everything you want. It's on the Although cannabis is more available to the Dutch, as a nation, they smoke less of it than we do. People think it's legal here, but is that true? Where in the world is cannabis legal? I think in Tanzania it's legal. Jamaica? Amsterdam's the only place I know. Um, is that, yeah, yeah. Amsterdam, yeah. The answer is nowhere. Amsterdam may be the most tolerant city in the world, but it's still illegal to possess the drug. The big difference is the unique way in which the Dutch authorities apply the law. If this policeman, Rob Deneef, was English, he'd probably have to arrest these drug dealers, but he's not. So tell me, how do you deal with cannabis in Amsterdam? We tolerate it. Uh -huh. uh, when the tourists are coming to Amsterdam, we tolerate that they use drugs in the coffee shops or in the hotel, but not on the street. By allowing a little bit of flexibility, it's making it safer, do you think? When it is uh, not allowed to do it, uh, then you see that the dealers are coming on the street, they buy it on the street, they go to the hotel, they go to the stations. Uh, so we don't have uh, uh, any view on it. In the coffee shop we know who the owner is, we know the quality, uh, like that sort of things. There's, there is no uh, danger for the tourists to use here. In Holland, there are just two classes of drug soft and hard. The Dutch believe that by treating the two classes of drug really differently, soft drug users are less likely to come into contact with hard drug users. Their heroin problem has not increased in 20 years. But back at home, our heroin problem has gone up a thousand percent since the 1970s. Here in the UK, the laws on classifying cannabis have changed recently, but nobody seems to know quite how. Do you know what class drug Cannabis is. Is it A? A, B, C, and it's no. It's a C, and it's gone up to a B. Yeah. Is it A? Is it A? No, it's not. No idea. It's legal, though, isn't it? I thought that if you had a small amount that was for personal use, you weren't arrested. Can you go to prison for it? No. Can you go to prison for cannabis? No. Yes, you can go. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. Warning. It's just not as easy as one, two, three. So what is the law? When it was a B drug, dealing cannabis would have got you 14 years behind bars and possession up to five. Now it's a C drug, you still get 14 years for dealing, but only two years for possession. Downgrading cannabis from class B to class C was intended to free up the police and courts for more serious crimes. But has that happened? Dame Ruth Runciman chaired an inquiry into the misuse of drugs for the police foundation. In reclassifying cannabis, most people don't understand this, the government made changes to the Police and Criminal Evidence Act that retained arrestability for all Class C drugs. There are those who think that the differences now between Class B and Class C are so small as to not warrant those two classes. I'm out with the Peterborough Police, and whilst they have a tough policy on alcohol, I'm curious to know whether they have relaxed their attitude towards cannabis since its reclassification. A recent UNICEF report said that the UK had the third highest rate of teens smoking dope in the developed world. In Peterborough, they have new community methods to get closer to the kids on the streets. Why are you offering sweets to them? Um, psychologically, it makes them change their mentality from an aggressive adult to a compliant young person. Whilst I had the opportunity, I thought I'd ask the kids if they had any experience of cannabis. Can I, uh, can I ask them a question? Yes, you can. Come on in a video, man. We're just finding out whether young people know about how the law has changed towards cannabis. Do you know, do you know if it's changed or not? Cannabis? Yeah. Um, it's all about wacky backy. Wacky backy. Do you know anything about wacky backy? Um, I know a little bit. I you do? Know. I know. Have you, have you, have you tried it before? Yeah. Yeah. Kane is 15 and told me he started smoking when he was 13. When I first started smoking it, like, I didn't really like it. Makes you trip it. Because my mates, once tricky. I got used to it, carried on smoking it every day, and that was it, really. So I suppose I got addicted to it, like fags. It's like, there's no mental addiction, you don't get pains and that, but you feel that you need it, sort of thing. And what does it do to you? Chills me up, 
makes me concentrate a lot more as well. Does so it? I find it hard to concentrate at school and that. Seriously, you smoke it before school? Yeah. What, every day? Yeah. <laughs> no. I need it to go to sleep and everything. I find it like an addiction, isn't it? What about your mum and dad? What do they say? Yeah, my mum's all right. It should rather me do that than go out with my mates and that cause trouble, isn't it? So what do the police do if they catch kids smoking dope? Previously, it used to be a, an arrestable offence. Straight away, we'd arrest them. Uh, now we issue a final warning for use of cannabis. Um, I believe it's three strikes and it is an arrest. Kane lives part-time with his granddad. Is he worried that cannabis may lead Kane onto harder drugs? It concerns me that um, it could lead to something else, something stronger. And once they get onto something stronger, they're hooked. Do you think that's a possibility with Kane? It's always a possibility. It's a worry, and it's all right, Kane saying, yeah, I'm in control. But I don't think you're ever in control. So you tried, you tried a few other little things? Yeah. But you didn't like them? Mm-hmm. Did, but thought, no, it's not a thing to be taken every day, isn't it? So it's just, well, I've not taken them, you know what I mean? I just stick to my weed. But you wouldn't be tempted, oh, I'm going to go and try something harder? No. Nah. Why is that? Have you seen the effects of what yeah. the hard stuff does? Yeah. And what does it do? It's nasty, like heroin and that shit, isn't it? It's not I've even never, worth taking. I've never seen what... I've never seen anybody... Wake up, like, hot and cold sweats, fucking... Can't stop moving and that, isn't it? Just dying, basically, more or less killing yourself, that sort of drug. Don't do nothing good for anyone, innit? It just tears all their families away and whatever, isn't it? It's nasty. Though Kane's granddad is understandably concerned, according to the Home Office, the great majority of cannabis users don't always move on to harder drugs. Although for those who do, it's bad news. Back in Amsterdam, it's time to get back to my experiment. At the beginning, the doctor warned me that cannabis could affect my concentration. I want to put it to the test. I'm going to perform a simple task, to put together a flat pack cabinet. I've got two of them. Different models, but similar. One I'll assemble sober, the second stoned on cannabis. Sober, my ability to follow instructions is fine. I'm on the ball. I know what I'm doing. It's just that I'm not very good at it. Next, I'm going to smoke a tenth of a gram of cannabis with tobacco, remembering to take only two drags. Ten minutes later, and I'm faced with the second flat pack cabinet. I don't know where to start. I've got to click something on this, and I can't make a decision. I don't know what to do. Oh my God, I only took two puffs. You become uh, uh, detached and, and also uh, not interested in, in, in things uh, anymore, indifferent in a way. I don't want to do anymore. <laughs> Seriously, it's really impossible. I just really want to go over there. Put my head down. The immediate effects of cannabis are dry lips, dry mouth, uh, droopy eyelids. Uh, people are gazing in a way. I mean, you, you just feel so completely spaced out. There's no way I could do anything. It feels like being sort of shot to oblivion. I don't know where I'd fit oblivion in in my life. While my brain may be shrinking, my waistline certainly isn't. I'm so hungry. Apparently cannabis triggers a chemical surge in the brain, which stimulates the appetite. There's also evidence that cannabis lowers blood sugar, oh, hence the craving for sweet things. Oh, no, 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 a custard one, this one. Oh, you know, I fight the calories so much, and then in the space of a bloody afternoon, I demolish a whole cake two packets of crisps, those funny little cheesy biscuits that I never normally eat. More or less a whole packet of Doritos. 
and I'm even hungry now. I'm back in the UK for a bit of a break from drug taking and I've begun to notice a pressure on my breathing. I know I smoke cigarettes, but I've never felt like this before. Headlines have suggested that cannabis is more dangerous than tobacco, so I'm off to see a top lung specialist, Dr Con, who spent the last eight years researching the effects of cannabis on the lungs. Is pure cannabis worse than nicotine? Well, they've done the studies looking at pure cannabis smokers, and one joint may be equivalent to three normal tobacco cigarettes in terms of the airway damage. So we can show you that pure cannabis smokers who don't mix their joints have lung damage. This is someone who's 22 and they're a cannabis smoker. They, they in fact stop now, but basically their lungs collapsed down. They were in St. Mary's fairly recently. And the reason that lung has collapsed down is because they've got holes in their lungs. And this is a normal set of lungs on a CT scan. This is the ex-cannabis smoker skin. Can you see these little holes here? And do you think that, that that's down to the cannabis? Well, it's very hard to imagine anything else causing it. This type of change we would expect to see when you're a bit older, so 40 plus 50, 60. But we're seeing it, this is a 22-year-old. So if I stopped, you know, stopped the smoking, the, the, the holes would, would heal up and, and I'd be okay? I'm afraid not. Those holes cannot be repaired. They are permanently with you. The lung is not a good organ in terms of repair. It's the same with tobacco. If you damage it and cause holes, those holes will are permanent. God. So whilst I knowingly inhale a burning substance, a cigarette in this case, I risk the possibility of premature ageing, an increased risk of dying from lung cancer, and a 50% chance of being killed by the habit. If I smoke cannabis, the jury is out, but the odds could be higher. But the plant cannabis has been used medicinally for over 4,000 years. The Chinese used it for unblocking bowels, Buddha ate it for enjoyment, and Queen Victoria used it for PMT. More recently, it's been used as pain relief for people with AIDS, Parkinson's and MS. But if it's not prescribed, it's still illegal. A Northumberland grandmother who refuses to give up using cannabis as pain relief is to be given one last chance to avoid eviction from her home. Pat Tabra has been self-medicating with cannabis for the last three years. Today she's going to court for growing and smoking cannabis in her home. Hello. 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 Sorry, did I wake you up? <laughs> well, I just got a <laughs> Big day, hey, big day. It is. I had phone calls from quarter past four last night till half past ten from well-wishers all over the country. Some of them are travelling from Aberdeen, some are travelling from Weymouth, just to go to the court by 2 o'clock this afternoon. No. Honestly. Do you ever have police coming around and raiding your house looking for your drugs? Oh, yes. Do they? Come with yes. sniffer dogs? They go with... No, they've never brought sniffer dogs, because if they come in here and say, where's your green, I usually tell them. But I, I did hide it somewhere, and I can't remember where I put it. That's a bit of a problem. Hide it and then... <laughs> I, I do forget it where you time. put it. I do it all the time. You don't, would, you, would you put it in cupboards? It um, behind something. Behind, behind the washing machine? No. Can doctors prescribe it or not? Or is that actually, it's completely forbidden? Well, there are medicines available with cannabis in. There's about three. Yeah. yeah. But who wants anything with chemicals in? No. It's been interfered with. It's been created by a pharmaceutical company, and so it will have a string of side effects. Yeah. I worked it out about two, three years ago that uh, to get the most amount of pain relief, I had to try and get uh, it into perspective. Was it easier to smoke it or easier to cook it? Uh, how do you... Is it soup or tea? Or about three weeks ago, I started experimenting with chocolate. Can I have a look? Yes. Oh, that to one make looks them. gorgeous. They are gorgeous. Each one has 0.1 of a gram inside of it. That is how much you need five times a day to be pain-free 24 hours a day and to sleep. And there's no grain in it, there's nothing in it. Just... Do you sell these? No, no. Oh, you're I wouldn't not... sell them to anybody. No, you wouldn't... I've I spent... never had them. You'd be a dealer then, wouldn't you? Yeah. Would you, I mean, would you give me one? Uh, no, I wouldn't give you one, but uh, when I go and get my hot water, if you want to try one, that's your business. Would 
I would so give if you I, one. Oh, you wouldn't give me one? If you stole one, you could keep it. 